Hi guys, how are you? Good. I'm good, how are you? Awesome, I'm doing well. Uh, thankfully I'm on the East Coast, but not getting that nasty storm that she's talking about yet. So uh, I wanted to know what you hope viewers get out of this series. What's the message you hope they gather? Well, I think uh, the overall message of the series is that you, if you do good deeds, and we all should do good deeds. Uh, you don't need to always take credit for them. You do them because they're the right thing to do. I think that's the big message of the show, right? Do right because it's correct. I don't. Maybe Nakai and Hartley have a different uh, take on it. Yeah, I would say that. Um, I think it's like no, um, no deed is too small or no deed is too big, and also it's also important when you do a deed and then you don't seek credit because sometimes it's also important to just make someone feel happy without seeking the credit. I think also if we all do good deeds, um, then it can just become the norm. And then I think it will really make this world a much better place. That's wonderful. I agree with all of you and I loved the show. So thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Next, we have Candy. She is from Candy Palooza. Hi, guys. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Hi. So my question for you is, for all of you, being helpful, obviously, is a great theme, doing good deeds uh, in this series. Can you tell me how, in your personal lives, how you do good deeds and how you're helpful? So for me, I think it's because I take care of my mom because at the same time she has a bit of a concussion. So I'm helping her and yeah, that's my answer. Um, I would say um, actually near the beginning of the pandemic, um, I had an elderly neighbor who um, she was by herself um, and every once in a while, um, we would make a little bit of extra food and we would just drop it off to her um, whenever we would have dinner. And I think it really, it really made her day. That's really nice. I, I hope Nakai did not give her mother the concussion. Uh, so, <laughs> no, uh, I'm sure she didn't. <laughs> my, my good deeds are so minor compared to theirs. When I walk the dog, I like to pick up litter that I see along the way. Just, you know, little things like that. That's wonderful. Congratulations on the series, it's beautiful. Thank you, thank you very much. All right, next up is Ashley Saunders with Ashley & Co. Hi everyone. Hi. Um, this, question, this question is for Jack. I love how the show focuses on stealthy acts of kindness versus being very public about them. How did you and your team come up with this idea for the show? Well, uh, it's funny. This was originally based on a, a book that had nothing to do with where it ended up. Uh, we just liked the idea. It, it was basically, it was about Ninja Preschool, the book that this was based on. But we just sort of liked the idea that there were these kids that were like the opposite of what the norm is today. They didn't care about social media or getting likes or views. They just wanted to do good stuff and not big world changing stuff, you know, fun little stuff that help people everyday sort of things and then disappear. And that's, once we hit on that idea, it was, that, that's where it all took off from. Well, I love it. The small acts of kindness are, it's a great lesson for everybody watching. Right. Thank you. Next up is Jana Setzer. She's from Whiskey and Sunshine. Hi. So I have a question both for Hartley and Nakai. And Jack, you can answer too if you want to, because I don't want to leave you out for sure. Um, Hartley, your character uh, reads a lot of comic books. Uh, do you have a favorite series or you know, comic book character in real life. And then Nakai, your character is also an avid reader, just maybe not of comic books. And so do you also read a lot of um, books in real life? Um, I'll, I'll go first. Um, I think um, for me, uh, I really like 
Um, I really like Marvel comics, um, specifically um, maybe maybe the Wolverine, um, Captain America, and I I I I just like that they do good things. Um, and yeah. So for me, I read a lot of books. Like I have a bookshelf right here. It's in my room. And um, I read many books in three different languages, French, German, and English, because um, we went to Germany for a while. So I picked up that language and then I picked up French from school and then English, I've just been speaking my whole life. So yeah, I'd say I like books too. Multilingual thing is beautiful, Nakai. And, and team cap all the way. <laughs> Thank you, Jana. So we're gonna try Nicole Mucci. She's having some audio issues. So if it doesn't work, Nicole, we can um, just skip over you until we get your audio working and then go to Olivia. I think it's working now. Oh, there we go, great. I, I, think, I think so. Um, my question was for Ari. So Ari, um, I was super, we were super excited for the series. Um, my son uh, has autism. And so we were super glad to see a superhero that had, um, you know, a disability. And so I was wondering, um, what kind of, um, what were you excited about um, the show and, you know, playing your character? Um. I, um, it was really exciting for me because I myself, I, um, I actually have, I'm on an IV pump, um, and I have an ostomy bag. Um, so it felt really amazing to be able to play a character who, um, was also disabled in a way, even though we are a little bit different in that aspect. Um, but I think it's really important for kids to be able to see themselves in television. Um, and I think that this is an area that I think needs to be um, explored more by um, different television programs. I agree. Okay, thanks. Uh, we will go up to Olivia Douglas, you're next. Hi, this question is just for Nakai. I was curious uh, how you feel that you relate to your character. Okay, funny thing about that. So I can relate to my character because she knows a lot about everything. And I also know some animal facts and she can go on for hours talking. And me and my grandma can go on talking about something that has nothing to do with what we were talking about in the first place. So like I'll do, I'll watch a show and then I'll just like tell my mom the facts about it or I'll see it somewhere. And then she's like, how did you know that? I was like, I read and I watch shows. So it's a lot of fun though, just to relate to a character. And yeah. That's awesome. That's, that's pretty cool that you have just random facts. I'm sure your mom enjoys those. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. No. But at the same time, yes. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Next, Candy. So, Nikai, um, the question about, um, you know, the backs, you the, the story. I'm sorry. <laughs> your character, you having a lot of similarities to your character. Um, Hartley, can you share some of your similarities to your character? Um, yeah, well, um, well, we're both medically complex. Um, but I think one thing that's important is that we, both of us, we don't let that get in the way of the things that we want to do. And I think, you know, I love, I'm a huge, um, I'm a huge superhero movie fan. I love comic books. And so I think that we relate, um, in a lot of ways, which is truly amazing. Awesome. Fantastic casting, Jack. Truly. Next up, Ashley. This question is for Hartley. As a fan of cartoons, what was it like seeing yourself become one on screen? Um, so it it was it was amazing. Um, you know, I I've had I've had a lot of surgeries, um, so I've been in the hospital quite quite a bit. Um, and something that always really got me through that was um, watching cartoons. It was just an escape for me. 
Um, and now being able to be on cartoons and, you know, do that for other kids, um, it's really special to me. That's great. Thank you. Jana, you're back up. Okay. So I love food trucks. I used to live in a city that has like a huge food truck scene. And so the fact that you could have a hidden like secret meeting place inside a food truck, I think is amazing. However, if you were to have a place that you could meet that wasn't in a food truck, where else would your top secret meeting place be? And all three of you can answer this. Mr. Jag, you go first. Uh, my favorite uh, secret meeting place, I would be uh, probably somewhere at Universal Studios, uh, maybe in the bottom of one of the rides. Uh, I would like that idea that, oh, look, I'm at the amusement park and I'm going in and oh, now I'm going underneath and I have a secret lair underneath Hogwarts or something. Uh, I just have, I'm just an amusement park sort of fan. I think that, okay, so I have two. I'd either do an underwater one where you'd have like this glass wall so you can see all the fish and everything swim by, except it'd be a very thick wall because if a shark comes, I don't want it getting in. Or I'd either have it in a lava volcano, like the volcanoes pouring out and then you'd have like this clear dome, but no one else can see it. So that's probably where I would do it. Um, I, I really like that it is in a food truck because it's just like such a, it's like a place that you wouldn't think to have a, a secret lair. Um, so I don't know, maybe somewhere, maybe somewhere public, like a library or something, and you just pull down one of the books and a, and a secret door opens up and that's where your lair is. I think that'd be really funny. I think that's- Love those ideas. Uh, so descriptive. Uh, Nakai has basically picked a James Bond villain type <laughs> lair in a volcano. And I'm like, oh, you know, maybe the library. That might be a nice place. <laughs> Thank you. Nicole, you're back up. Hi, Jack. Uh, my question is for you. Um, you know, you've done a couple different projects with DreamWorks and stuff. And mm -hmm. I was kind of um, wondering, you know, um, what were you, what are you hoping that families are going to take away uh, from the show? Well, uh, a lot of things, you know, um, I'm a big believer in uh, uh, the idea that sometimes entertainment is just good because it's escapism, right? And just on that level, I hope we've made an exciting show that all kids can watch and enjoy and forget about the outside world. But I also like, you know, the central message of the story, which is it's nice to do nice things. And, and then when you do that, other people pay it forward, I think is the phrase. And uh, it's sort of a joke, right, in, in the series. The people in Harmony Harbor have no idea this is going on. They, they just think they live in the luckiest town in the world because everything we lose shows back up and everything goes right. And if if we all were doing this, we were all secretly doing good deeds, we'd all feel that way. So I hope that's a message we get across to. Thank you. Next up is Olivia Douglas. This question is for Hartley. I was curious how you felt you related to your character. Um, I think definitely we, um, we relate in a lot of ways, you know, we're medically complex. Um, we both like superhero movies, um, and comic books. Um, I think the fact that we, um, we, we have, we have these, these things that make us different, um, but we don't let them get in the way of all the, all the amazing things that we want to accomplish in life. Awesome. And I'm sure other, you know, kids that are in a similar situation appreciate that aspect of the show. So awesome job. I will also say this, because uh, maybe Harley won't say this about himself. He and Ari both are, are dogged. Once they get on an idea, once they try to do something, they don't give up. And uh, he was that way. You know, he wasn't a professional voice actor when he first started. And he worked and he worked and he worked at it. And, and that's very much like his character. That's awesome. Great job. Thank you for that. That also means a lot. 
Andy, you're up next. Jack, can um, can the viewers expect any language learnings? And uh, Nakai shared that she is multilingual with us. Would that be something that we can expect in future episodes? Uh, I can't give, I'm not allowed to give away future episodes. So uh, I will say that there is, you're not going to, I don't think anyone is going to learn a second language from the show, but I do think we, we, try to slip in words and concepts in the shows. We have another character named uh, Jax who sort of takes everything literally and he gives us that opportunity to go, well, no, what that saying really means is, and so we'll be expanding kids' knowledge of language, but probably not of other languages. If I'd known uh, that Kai spoke German, uh, we would have used that uh, right. relentlessly. <laughs> Wonderful. Ashley, you're up next. Okay, to piggyback off of Jana's question, I would love to hear, you know, you picked your layers, some of them a little bit more sinister than others. <laughs> I kind of like the volcano idea, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, what is your favorite ninja skill or ninja gadget? Uh, I'll, I'll go first. I think, um, I think that, um, the grabinator is really awesome. Just having this like robotic hand that shoots out and can grab things. I think that that would have to be my favorite. I think my favorite would be the ninja skill because like ninjas can probably just walk into a room. You don't even hear them. You don't even know. But then they're like all sensors are on around them. So I'd have to go with ninja skills. I, I agree with both of them. Uh, I just <laughs> like the outfit. I think the ninja outfit looks great. It's very slimming to wear black. So. Yeah, <laughs> <all>. no, <laughs> I agree. All great answers. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Jana, you're up next. All right, so this question is for Nakai. You are quite the accomplished young actor. Do you have a preference for live acting or voice work? Actually, I used to think that I was not like as good or not great at voiceover at all. So then when I got to see some of the work that I did with Zenko Go, I was like, is that actually me? Or is that someone else who just sounds like me? So now I'd actually have to say that I like both of them because they're all really fun and you can actually encounter people. Thanks. Nicole, you're back up. Hi guys, so my question is for all three of you. I was curious if you had a good deed that you had to pick for someone, what would it be? Uh, do you mean a good deed that we would want to do for someone or a good deed we yes. want to make somebody do? Oh, yes, correct. Oh, Sorry. <laughs> a good deed that I would want to do for someone. Oh, that is, that is tough for any, uh, for, uh, I guess I don't have one. Nick, ah, you're, you're up. Oh, that's not fair. That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> I probably surprise someone with something that they wanted or like just deliver something to them that they've been begging or pleading for I would have to say maybe watching somebody's pet because you know then I get to help them out a little bit and I also get to play with somebody's pet so I think that that would be what I choose I know what mine is uh I, I you ever been, it just probably happened to you Nicole you're in the checkout line and you see like there's a kid who doesn't have enough money for something and you just sort of pay for it for them or you slip them a thing, a, yeah. a dollar. I love doing stuff like that. I just, you know, especially for little kids. I think that's always fun. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm in the line. Yeah. Sorry, Olivia, you're back up. This question is for Jack. I was curious where the um, idea for the show came from. Well, uh, 
it was uh, it was originally a book uh, about uh, ninjas in daycare, and it got uh, the way development of TV works is a lot of people then weigh in and the changes. And by the time I came to the project, it was about uh, kids who do good deeds uh, and are superheroes. And, and so that was, I already came in, it was already existent. Uh, I, I made a lot of changes. One of the big changes was having uh, Ari's character I would originally not be a member of the team because I liked the idea of establishing him right off the bat of, oh, here's this kid who is not only the equal of the other kids, he caught them. And then when he catches them, you know, he doesn't even want to, it's not kind of like he's going to turn them in. He wants to join them. So that was sort of my big innovation was to come up with creating this outsider character who then joins the team. That's wonderful. Well, it's definitely a great series and I can't wait for everybody to see it. Thank you. Candy, you're back up. So if you could all tell me what has been your favorite thing about being a part of the Team Zinco Go series? Well, I'll tell you what my uh, favorite part is, is actually been working with the kids because they are so optimistic and joyful and they love what they do. And when you work with sometimes uh, adult actors who have done it a lot and don't appreciate it as much as they appreciate it. And they just, you know, Nakai is so much fun in the booth because she always likes to put her own spin on things after a couple takes. And Hartley just is the most, he just, the kid never gives up and he's just always going. To me, that was always, or the record days were my favorite days. Uh, out of a lot of great experiences, I'll just say. That's wonderful. What about you guys? Hartley, um, Nikai? I, I was actually gonna say something similar. I think just able to people and kind of pool all of our, you know, just being able to meet people. Um, and, you know, being on a show is, it's very, it's, it's amazing. So, yeah. One of my many, many favorite things being in the booth was that when we were recording Mr. Jack, he would always change his filters. Always. <laughs> and I still haven't figured it out. <laughs> but that was my favorite thing. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much. And again, we can't wait for everyone to see the series. It's fantastic. Thank you. Ashley, you're back up. Okay, so this question is for all of you. Nakai, you can go first. Um, what is the, your favorite Zinko that your character has been a part of in the show so far? Hmm. I actually don't have a favorite because I love them all because it's always just something new and something after another and it's always entertaining. Um, I would say um, when we, uh, we I, I think I remember at one point we, um, I think we did a lemonade stand and my character Ari, he got to dress in this huge lemon costume um, so I think that that would have to be my favorite. My favorite's in the uh, in the first episode when Hartley's joining the team and he wants to prove himself. Uh, Ari wants to prove himself. And so it seems so simple. Oh, we're just going to go in and feed the dog. And then the dog gets loose. And I named the dog after one of my uh, dogs that has since passed away. So, and, and the dog was crazy like that dog was too. Uh, and it's just it, seeing them do it badly you know, and the dog beat the team really makes me happy because 99% of the time, of course, the team does great and they're successful. So watching them lose is sort of fun. <laughs> it was super cute. Thank you all. Thank you. Jana, you're up next. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about takeaways for the show already. However, if you could summarize the importance of the show and its values of kindness and diversity in one sentence, what would that be? Jacko, 
that's probably best for you, but obviously Hartley and Nakai, if you want to take a stab, please do. Uh, doing a good deed is its own reward. Follow that, kids. <laughs> okay. Sorry, next time I'll make him last. <laughs> then I'll say humility. Uh, I think uh, doing good and not taking the credit. Thank you. So we'll finish up this group with Nicole. She's having a storm there. So hopefully her question can come through. Nicole, do you want to try to come on camera? No. Oh no, we've lost Nicole. It's okay. She texted me. So I, oh, there she is. There she is, Nicole. Nicole. I'm the voice of Nicole. Go ahead. Oh, no, you're on mute. You're muted, Nicole. Unmute. Unmute. Can you guys hear me? Sorry. Yes. We're like no. having a thunderstorm. So this is, <laughs> it's been crazy. Um, but Jack, my question was for you. Um, you wrote the first episode. Mm -hmm. And so I was just wondering how, you know, you made um, the characters kind of go through this, um, you know, uh, kind of scenario of meeting each other versus them, you know, just being superheroes right off the gate. So I was kind of curious, you know, kind of, what was behind that? All right, I, I'll tell you a little show business secret. Uh, that's actually the fourth episode we wrote. We did just start with them all being a team and we felt like it wasn't gonna be clear enough to the kids what was going on. So then we went back and said, all right, how would we introduce all the characters? And I came up with the idea of, well, what if there were only three of them and they were already successful and then this new kid moves to town and he's going, well, this is really weird. And he notices this thing that nobody else in town notices, right? That all these good deeds are spontaneously happening. And then he figures it out and he plays this trap for them. So uh, once we came up with that idea, I mean, it, it was such an easy episode to write. Uh, no, no. And, and then we just said, well, we'll put, it, we'll put that first, right? And that'll serve as our introduction. And sort of the value of doing that is also, our animators at that point, after four, you know, fourth episode in, they've learned the characters. The town is pretty established. Uh, and so it, it actually turned out really well. So we actually produced it fourth, but we put it first. So there you go. <laughs> Good to know. It was great. Thank you. Thank you. Wow.